Now some of these are limited. Whoa, 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 whoa. what was that? Uh, it was Howard the Duck. That was an original pressing. For fuck's sake. That's Solar Babies? No. Rad. Definitely. Cloak and Dagger? It's perfect. Ooh, Star Wars. No. Phantom Menace. I like it. Ah, oh, kick in. That stands. He did dump you. Ugh. Oh, nah, fuck this, I'm doing the show. Three rad dudes with nothing better to do get abducted by the crew of the Starship Alpha 2. They're from the planet Q, which, due to a space-time loop, is stuck in 82 and must be rescued. They need our heroes to discuss the latest news and give their reviews of games and movies, too. Sure hope you're not confused. We swear this is all true. Not just the premise, too. The Totally Rad Show. Totally Rad Show, episode number 30. Hello, congratulations. Wow. That just... I didn't know we were. 30 episodes. I'm Alex Albrecht. I'm Jeff Kanata. We're like as old as you guys. I'm Dan Trachtenberg. We are. It's like... Wait, what? (laughs) (laughs) Thing. Uh, Dude, this is your weekly dose of all things rad. We uh, uh, crush everything that happened rad in the news into a gelatin, cover it in chocolate, and call it a Turkish delight. That's my favorite candy. This is where I was coming from. Big Turk. And when we were in England last week, you had a Turkish delight. At Shakeaways, which we had got to talk about. We didn't talk about that at all last week. We didn't talk about Shakeaways. We also we also did a whole thing about like what our favorite candy bars were, and because there's when you go to other countries. There's candy bars you can't get. Remember Lion Bars? We loved Lion Bars. Lion yes. Bars were good. What was the one that I got? Fluffer, fluff, fluff, fluff. What's your favorite candy bar? Uh, my fluff, guys? favorite cam- candy bar? Oh. Wow. Okay. Oh, I, I mean, I've gone through different stages. Of course. Like, what is well, now? just answer. What is, what is <laughs> now? Because now? Beef jerky? <laughs> Please don't make me <laughs> just decide on one I right now. I've had different in my life. Now? My favorite candy bar? I don't really... Yeah, I don't really... I don't know. Pick, pick one. Wow. You guys say one. Well, I have one. I, I'm, wow. Big Turk is my favorite. It's, I, as far as I know, you can only get it in Canada. Big and Turk. maybe I think that's why it's special to me is that I can only get it. Yeah, if you had it here Somebody all the time. send it to me. Like I have I'm going to say I'm a mix between uh, Twix, but they don't give you enough. True. Uh, Kit Kat, but they don't give you enough. They never give you enough. That's <laughs> the whole well, ploy. And then... Three Musketeers, they totally give you a yeah. <laughs> They give you a little bit too much. When I was a kid, yeah. I used to get Charleston Chew because it was the longest one, and so it felt like... Yeah, but it also tasted like ass. No, it's good. It tastes like the underside of Charleston, North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, ma- I love Three Musketeers so much as a kid that I made nougat. Oh, you told I, us about I, that. I looked, my mom and I looked at the instructions on the back of... The, the, that is well, your the mom's ingredients. a cook- your mom's a cooking genius. <laughs> no, <laughs> instructions. She was Three Musketeers <laughs> to make this. I know. Follow no. these instructions. Exactly. This is the whole. That was what was crazy about. It. We just looked at the ingredients and we just bought those ingredients and and put it together. Yeah, but her Mrs. T is like. No. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, she was the control I mean, chicken like grandmaster yeah. maker thing. And <laughs> Which also, we means want to she thank made the Nikki recipes. Smith. For yes. the lovely Pushing Daisies background. Which a yes. show we love. I, I, I love and, that show. And did great. Show. I haven't seen did, episode two yet. Did great in its debut, which I attribute to our show, of course, because yeah. we were telling everyone. I love it. attributing stuff to our the show. The TRS effect. We so we should say, Nikki, did. thank you, because she's Serenity in the forums, who is oh, cool. the uh, Photoshop goddess. Oh, cool. And is amazing. Well, let's get into the show, shall we? Now let's that we're back it. in the uh, hot garage. The States. Back in the USSA. Welcome to movies this week. We are going to talk about Michael Clayton. Yeah. Uh, the new w- movie from Tony Gilroy, who wrote um, the Bourne movies. Ooh. First time directing this movie. Mm. Wow. Interesting. interesting. Very interesting. Uh, George Clooney, Tom Wilkinson, uh, Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton. It's a, uh, George Clooney is this dude, Michael Clayton, who's... Sidney Pollack, by the way. Yes, was in it as well. Um, uh, he was like a fixer and a, a legal fixer yeah. and he's faced with the most difficult challenge of his life yeah. to fix. It's a legal thriller. Yeah. <clears throat> and what did you think? A-Town. Uh, well, the A-Town train is going to say, uh, <laughs> it's a technical difficulty. Um, I, 
I'm gonna say that I thought this movie was genius. I thought it was brilliant from beginning to end. I thought it was shot really well. It was super slow burn, which I loved. I was shocked at how much I enjoyed the movie and how clearly much Jeff hated it. Um, I, I thought it was great. I thought the performances were great. I thought it was, it didn't give you much information at all uh, until, you know, you could kind of piece things together. And um, I thought the acting was great. I thought it was shot really well. Uh, I, I went in thinking it was probably going to be a good, you know, movie, as it were. So I... I <laughs> You know, why, why is that getting air quoted? Because <laughs> it's a movie. Because uh, it's really a film. Uh, ah, I but no, I, I, I mean, I really, I have to say, I, re I really dug it a lot. I thought Tom Wilkinson was great. Mm. Tilda yes. Swinton played the be like the way that they captured her sort of like anxiety of knowing that she was doing stuff that was not kosher, and then having to go and present that information to the public and needing it to be true but it's clearly not true I mean, the whole <laughs> the whole movie was i thought i thought was great oh no oh no <laughs> oh no stay hold on I, I, i'll go next yes, why don't you go jeff because uh, clearly you had the face of alex is wrong no i oh. love this movie oh i walked out of it going alex is gonna hate yeah, this I was movie why it's a great movie it's a great movie no it's a great movie i don't hate here's great what movies I, here's what i love about movies it that aren't great it, it starts, it's so <laughs> brilliantly told. It starts like faded out, like out of focus. Yeah. And co g gradually comes into focus through the course of the film. That's you kind of don't know what's happening. You ha get a lot of information and it, this world gradually comes into focus and by the end you are so there yeah. and everything makes so much sense and you are- And the acting The is ending is so powerful. The is amazing. Also, um, the, the, uh, Every scene in this movie, it's as if there's this tapestry of information, this world that's really rich, and there's lots of stuff happening on the outer edges of it, and you're just seeing this much. Mm. It's just focusing on this much of the world, but it's so clear that everything else is fully wrought. Everything, there, all these characters have other lives that are going on, and you're just jumping in and getting this snippet informa of information and jumping back out. Yeah. Also wanna say, you know who's the mo one of the most underrated actors, I think, out there? Sidney Pollack. Yeah, dude. I agree. I, I think, he, is he ever, as a director, maybe not, but as an actor, is he ever in a bad movie? Well, I don't, I don't, he's, I mean, not, he's always he's awesome. never bad. He's, yeah, and what that commercial with him is, is, I don't know if you've ever oh, seen Oh, yeah, 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 the uh, directing uh, yeah. Is, yeah. Well, what did you think then? Um, I loved the naturalistic um, way it, the story was told. Mm. Um, and I love that it, it, the filmmaking mm -hmm. was very naturalistic it, oh. without doing any shaky cam, uh, my favorite word, docu style. Mm -hmm. right. It was actually it reminded me of 70s stuff like um, All the President's Men or Clute, same director. Yeah. Um, where, where, Three Days of the Condor, uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. which is directed by Sidney Pollack. Yeah. But um, <laughs> very, uh, like, shots last <laughs> long and that makes it feel natural uh, as opposed to whatever. Um, but the the problem I had with that is that I was a little bit bored. Um, really, I'm no. pretty sure that I need to see it again because I'm pretty sure it was all I wasn't. It, I, I was very what? exhausted while watching it, and yeah. I, I could tell that I could feel the energy of the crowd watching this, and I could feel that I was not feeling it. Yeah. Um, but uh, mm. had to watch it again. I have to say, I walked out of this movie feeling the same thing that I that I felt. Um, when we walked out of the lookout, and I was like, "This score is amazing. Who did the score?" And it's like uh, my favorite composer, Warner, right? yeah. you know, James New Newton Howard. Newton Howard. Yeah. And <clears> he <throat> is a chameleon. He the 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 the, like the score Geico. the score to um, uh, the uh, Unbreakable mm. is this modern. Uh, almost techno-y score. Mm -hmm. The score to Signs is like Bernard Herrmann. This movie is not a score I would own. I don't like to listen to this music, but what right. it did for the... Oh, so under and... Well, let me, let me ask you guys amazing. something. Um, what did you guys think about how r ultra-realistic... There were three scenes that I thought uh, nailed I you're talking the about. realism in this movie. One was when George Clooney was trying to get into Tom Wilkinson's hotel room. That was the most realistic break The bathroom, in, you mean? Yeah. No, when he's trying to get in through that big yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, to me, sold them. By that, right then, I was like, I am so in. And um, with a little bit of a totally. spoiler Wilkinson. cam here, 
with Wilkinson. I know what you're talking about. That scene with Wilkinson. One shot. One shot. Spectacular. Three minutes. So realistic. So realistic. And that that just to and me haunting. summed up. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. Because you're like, that, what about you know the, that can't happen. What about the horses moment? Yeah. Oh, which, yeah. Which in, in any other movie might seem really hokey and yeah. lame and cheap. Yeah, this, this is really good filmmaking, especially it's, from it a is. first-time director. Yeah. I, I, I'm, surpri- I'm sorry that you didn't like it. I'm, I, I, well, it was a slow burn. I mean, it was definitely yeah. a slow burn. I think it's the mood I was in, <laughs> yeah. and I could feel while I was watching, I was like, this all feels good, but yeah. nothing's clicking. I don't feel any of the drama. Wow. Ugh. Yeah. So and and yet, but yeah. there were moments where I could that feel that should. this was very yes, intense. Yes, 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 yes. What, what about I wasn't the, feeling the, the, the ending credits sequence. Amazing. Awesome. Amazing. Yeah. By the way, yes, totally. Amazing. I was actually thinking this is the best part of the movie to me. It just yeah. well, but that's the and biggest kind of remind, making part of the movie. Well, you know? um, anyway, we got we got news this week yeah, too, right? Yes, yeah. totally. Pop quiz, hot shots. Less clapping. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> was that the answer? Did I miss? I didn't even get the choice. Um. What Saturday morning television show Thundercats aired in this no it wasn't Saturday mornings full time um, no aired in the 70s 80s I believe and then Thundercats. again in the 80s 90s and there's some news about it aired again aired again Smurfs went away Power came Rangers back. new and improved oh Power new and improved so 70s have... and 80s originally well no Power Rangers was out then Nobody put us out of our misery weird. yes uh, there are the dinosaurs Dinobots Oh, you're talking about um, um, Journey to the Center of the Earth? No. Hmm. You're, I think Put you're faking it, but you're saying it wrong. Land of the Lost. Oh, uh, Land yes. of the Lost. Yeah, with, uh, with yeah. Oh, wow. That Making a movie back? of it? Movie? Brad Sibberling. Mm, my boy. Lemony Snicket. Gauchos. Okay. And Gaucho. A Gaucho. It's making a Land of the Lost. I think that's kind of cool. interesting. I don't it's know. It's kind of cool, yeah. I, mean, I almost said cool, but I don't know. It could be very cool. You know, nowadays, I'm not... I, I'm more excited about the Thundercats news than yeah. I am... This, and that's interesting, this, right? Yeah. The guy, um, they, they, they kind of are attaching a director. He is an art director on the video games Gears of War and Unreal Tournament 3. Yeah. And it's going to be a full CG movie. So think of Thundercats being made by the, design, the art, art designer for Gears of War. And T3. I like... So there's going to be giant big dudes pads. with no neck. Well, I kind of well, no. I like that how huge those guys were. That started to make the Thundercats. When I started to mm. visualize, yeah. I paired that, that brought it out of the '80s and into the. Awesome. I was like, okay. I don't know. If there was. I thought it could be possibly all CG. I didn't know that it was. Oh, I thought that was in the article. Maybe I read it wrong. Okay. But I can't. I don't imagine, know now either. I can't because he said something like, "What do you think it's going to be? A bunch of guys painted running around like cats?" Yeah. Right. Huh. Well, yeah. That's what the guy from. Gears they could be like Dumbledore enhanced. I'm not Dumbledore. What's the dude? Hagrid? Or Hagrid. No. I hope Well, yeah, Hagrid, Hagrid or uh, Lord Hagrid of the Rings d- guy, Gandalf. Uh, what? what? Enhanced, mean? like made bigger. Gandalf? Gandalf? <laughs> yeah, Ian McKellen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was it. I just don't huge. know what you mean by that. <laughs> because he didn't look like a cat? No, enhanced, made big, made larger than he was. <laughs> let's, larger. Let's, let's, let's move, move on. on. He was larger. <laughs> um, gosh. Oh, shit. What were some other news stories? Uh, okay, well... Because it was a big day for news. It was a, a, week. a big week. A um, lot, of, lot of casting announcements okay. in the Star Trek arena. Yes. Oh, yeah. We reviewed one Run, Fat Boy, Run last week. Simon we Pegg is Scotty. I think that's great. Oh, that's perfect. Young Scotty? Yeah. Great? That's great. Will he be... Will he be... Scottish? Yeah. But yeah. I, I almost said that. I was like... Is Scotty Scottish or is his name Scotty and he has an accent? No, Scotty Scottish. Okay, well, good. Yeah. What's the difference between those two things? Well, oh, I was sure he was British. Oh, uh, no. Because I'm in Peg. Scottish. Yeah. Oh. He's got the Scottish. Uh, Jonathan Cho. Yes. From Harold we were Kumar. talking about Harold Kumar in American Pie. He's, yes. uh, he's uh, Sulu. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. I mean, I, know, I, know. I love this well, young one cool thing. Now I'm going to make you go very cool. These are all like, okay, here's very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, I'm more excited about Simon Pegg than John yeah. Cho. Well, Chris Pine, who we saw in a play. Yeah. yeah. Who is spectacular. Awesome. Who's, who's the Fat son Pig. of uh, the captain in uh, Chips. Yep. Whoa. Yeah. Really? Blue. Beep. Yeah. I have yeah. Been. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Bam. So that's really cool. Yeah, who does he play? Oh, uh, James T. Kirk, possibly. I thought Matt Damon was doing. No, it. that was like the first initial rumor from. This movie could either be awesome, amazing, or, or a complete train wreck. <laughs> well, I can't imagine a train wreck. Why, why not? They're casting all. I mean, sort can, of pseudo no names. You know well, and I mean? it's like Except for Simon yeah, it Pegg. Be, when Simon Pegg is the biggest actor that's in your movie, 
It, those are pseudo names. And it could also be the OC Star Trek edition. Right, yeah. You know? Well, it yeah. is J.J. Abrams, so thankfully, yeah, just, hopefully that has yeah. something to do with it, but... Felicity, the Star Trek edition. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> um, also... The Space Hills. That is it. That's it? Yeah, well, I mean, that's j- cool. Jumper, the Jumper trailer. The Jumper oh. trailer was amazing. Yeah. Although so was the I'm Chocolate so War. I'm so in for that movie. The Dude. Charles. Oh, yeah. You know what Jumper Fox is? Charles. Charlie Wilson's War. You know what Jumper is? It's a... Uh, Beginning Night, of X-Men 2. Nightcrawler, yeah. the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Used, dude, yeah. okay, you gotta say jump, Jumper is Hayden Christensen, uh, Samuel Jamie Jackson. Bell, and Samuel Jackson. I don't know who Jamie Bell is. Uh, Billy Elliot. And King, he was in King Kong. But directed by Doug Lyman. Yeah. I don't think that guy's made it. I don't think I've not loved one of his movies. What has he done before? Born Identity. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, Mr. Swingers, Mrs. Swingers, go, Mr. Mr. Mrs. Mrs. Smith. Yeah. I did not like Mr. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Smith. I, I liked the way it was shot, but it ended like a Ugh, wet fart. It's terrible. There. Shall we? What if, what if it wasn't in an elevator? Then it would have been, nobody would have cared. <laughs> really? It's still wet. It'd be gross. Well, but for you. It's personal. The whole thing yeah. is, is if you're in an elevator, everybody knows it. That's what it means. Uh, it's, more, no, it's, 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 it's personal. A, it's personal. <laughs> Okay, so here we are in the video game segment. Um, we've been doing 30 episodes of this show. Yeah. Craziness. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a Way back in our first few episodes, the game that we talked about the most, that we got most excited about, I think that... The old PQ? Little Puzzle Quest. Mm-hmm. And Puzzle Quest has just been released on Xbox Live Arcade and the PC this week. Yes. And Wait, wasn't it on the PC originally? No, there was my a demo was on the, the PC. Demo, yeah. demo only, and it was fully on released on the PC. That is now. a long time to have just a demo. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, um, I downloaded it, bought it immediately, played played some of it. Um, Watch. It's been a while it's since been a we long played time, it, but yeah. it's uh, still a great game. Um, if if you haven't back. played it on the DS, you should buy, and you have a 360. I would recommend downloading it. Huh. It's <laughs> not better. only are you recommending it. But our site is recommending yeah. it to you. It's yeah. very easy to go purchase it by clicking on that is the true. Puzzle Quest icon well, on the, the Toy Ratchet. Not the one he was talking version, about. Not the one I was yeah. talking about. Right. He says buy the 360. Uh, I'm going to agree with him. I'm actually, agree with him. If, only if you don't have a DS. I would say right. this is the perfect portable game. And wow, having it on the great. 360 yeah. almost isn't... I was saying, really? As I gorgeous it. as it looks. No, it looks it's awesome. It's gorgeous. But HD. I don't pull out my controller... I got to go through, okay, I'm not going to watch, am I going to watch a TV show right now? Am I watching this movie oh, I got to well, see? Or am I pulling out my controller? Yeah. When I'm pulling out my controller, it's because I'm doing a thing. Yeah. I'm not no, playing the casual game. The only time I play the Xbox Live games is if I'm like, if we're going to play a game online together, I'm like, I'm wait, I, and you guys are going to be on like five minutes, I'm like, all right, well, let me pull yeah. out a little thing. That's yeah. what I'm, So yeah. DS version, totally superior. superior. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, speaking of DS... We were just traveling to London. Yes. And uh, on the plane back, I played a bunch of uh, Phantom Hourglass. Yes. Which oh, is yeah. the new Zelda DS game. Yeah. Uh, so just real quickly, I wanted to say it, it's pretty freaking rad. Cool. Um, control scheme, all stylus. Nice. So you like slash to slash. You do a circle to do the spin attack. Cool. Very cool. That's fun. But again, not the kind of game as a portable game, it's, it's more this like epic grand thing. Yeah. I found myself, it was good to have 10 hour plane flight because I could really get into it, but the best thing about Puzzle Quest is you can pop in, do a couple of fights and pop out. It's, yeah, it's that perfect, is, that although is. Although I never the, really yeah, did that with Puzzle Quest. Oh, well, that's because hours. I would come up and you'd be in your car and be yeah. like, dude, we're just about to go in. And you're like, sorry, what? Yeah, yeah. I, I came here an hour early so I could play Puzzle <laughs> Quest in my car. <laughs> Um, so the other, the other game we've been playing a lot of, it came out a couple of weeks ago, but uh, Alex, you and I played a bunch of Medal of Honor Airborne yes, this week. Yes, which is the, uh, the new in the Medal of Honor series, which is all the World War II stuff. Which is interesting because back in the day, mm-hmm. uh, Medal of Honor was the Dude. premier that, World War II series. Yeah. That Call first Duty. level of Frontline... Yeah. Where yeah. The, the D-Day level yeah. thing was like, it was as incredible as that Saving Private Ryan. Call of yeah. Duty, the first Call of Duty came out and it was like a, an also ran, you know, like, yeah. oh, we want to be Medal of Honor too, but yeah, yeah. The, they've, they've switched places. The and I think, turned. And I think Call of Duty is still better than this game. Agreed. Um, we, we played it and had, a, had some dif- difficulties uh, early on. Um, the, first off, the control scheme why people create games for the Xbox 360 and don't use the Halo control scheme in a first-person shooter is beyond me. You're not going to make a better control scheme. Yeah. 
you're not you're not doing yourself a disservice by being like well, we're gonna p- pander to the Halo players. What right? was the no. control scheme? How, how Ridiculous! It was Every, like you do everything that you would do in those games, but it's just different buttons. All all the weird buttons like bumper to. I, I can't thankfully, even get into it. thankfully they do have an alternate control scheme, and control it is basically the Halo default control scheme number two. Yeah. By the way, um, there were a few things that this thing. I will say that the airborne thing could have been completely removed from the game, and the game would have been just as good. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that you can parachute in and land anywhere you want, uh, first off, is only the first ten seconds of any map, yep. unless you die, mm-hmm. and then they force you to jump out of a plane again. Secondly, they have green drop zones where they recommend that you land. So theoretically, if you don't want to land in the part where you land and instantly get killed by people, you have to land in these green ones. So why give me the option? Mm. Um, but let's, we should say, say good. Well, yes, but we should say that it, it's really interesting. You're talking about how you yeah. can parachute into any part of the level. The levels are really set up almost like giant multiplayer maps. They are. Oh yeah. And and the the campaign storyline. One level, one map. It's so big they're that huge. there's like multiple points of the story that take place just in that one and map. And you can choose to go to whichever point. You don't have to do it in order. So there's like four things that you have to do. You can choose to do them in any order you want. Right. Uh, but they're all encased in this, yeah, very multiplayer. So map you stay on style. one map for much longer than you would in a normal kind of yeah. campaign game. There which are is couple, interesting. It, that's very. It's very interesting. And 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 if there were, if you were more able to use the way that you parachute in to an advantage of that, it would seem even more cool. Mm-hmm. But since it seemed like you were still already supposed to do these like little things, it, it was sort of weird to me. There were a couple, two real quick things that were really good. Um, one is that when you actually did land a shot on somebody, um, these like, yeah. what looked like the sort of like... It's like a red X. A re- basically a red X popped up, which was very satisfying because like... Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which has the point system when points come up when you know you've killed somebody, um, yeah. it, you know that the feedback. shot went through. It's, it's good it's, feedback. It is good, it, except it should have gone one more further, which is when it was a kill, you should have also known that it was killed, because sometimes they like slouch down and it looked yeah. like they were just crouching. And the AI is terrible in this game. The AI is Atrocious. ridiculously bad. Yeah. Ridiculously bad. But then you also, as you get better at using your gun, as you use a certain gun more and more... It does these like slow mo medals, yeah. like marksman awards, and cool. then upgrades the weapon. Yeah, so as cool. you're using a gun, you get more and more abilities to use with that gun, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff this game gets wrong. That HUD is yeah. way too big and obtrusive. That, like I said, the AI is horrendous. Guys would just stand there and you're like shooting at them and they're yeah. just like, whoa. But. We were having fun. It was a great time. It's weird. I was ready to hate this game, I and then know. I was like, I kind of want to keep playing it. I, I'm, I was sad that I had to leave. Yeah. I wanted to play uh, it. The other big, huge release we have to talk about yeah. this week is Orange Box. Half-Life 2 Orange Box, which I, I have to say, it, it's a little bit of a sleeper for me in the sense that, okay, Half-Life 2, two years ago, I, I loved, loved, loved it. Really, maybe one of the best games I have ever played. Mm-hmm. But you, you hear, you know, Episode 1 was amazing. And you, you hear about that, and you're like, well, I can't get excited all over again because this is a game that's been around. But, dude. Are you replaying Half-Life 2? Yes. Me too. Have you? Pl- okay, well, t- talk about your experience with ha- Orange Box a little bit. Because you bought it on the 360, right? Yeah. Oh. What, PC? I bought it on the 360. He is on the PC. Ah, okay, okay. Um, well, first of all, Half Life 2. Also, played it a couple years ago, a year ago. Beat it because I played it on Xbox or whatever I played it on. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably played it on the PC, right? No. no. Oh, you played it on the yeah. Xbox One? Yeah. Mm. Um, well, I thought it was the 360. No. no. But, okay, it was the Xbox One. Um, but playing it again. You realize, right? I, I don't know. If, I mean, I remember feeling that way, but, uh, dude. You know, everything you said about Bioshock, I've been thinking about it now, especially in terms of this game. The storytelling. You know, storytelling is basically, subconsciously, as you're experiencing a movie or or a video game, who, what, where, when, and why. Every every piece of new information is who, what, when, where, and why. When you're playing Sonic the Hedgehog, the only fun you can have is you have to collect rings because it equals points to right. beat the level. You collect right. rings and then you get, uh, the get, to, the en- and get yeah. to the end as qu- quickly as possible. That's the <clears throat> maximum fun you can play. Mm-hmm. The story is a MacGuffin. The story is a conceit to just do this stuff. Right. You exactly. don't care about Professor X or uh, right. whatever, yeah. like Robotnik, um, or any, any, pl- any other kind of game. Half-Life, you get the story 
through the game, the game that you're uh, the the fun that you're going to have by killing people is enhanced when you start this game. And first impressions are everything. You start this game on a train into somewhere. And you don't know who you are. You don't know what's going. You're asking, but you're not. It's not a cinematic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, are, you are actually like, where do I, where do I go? You have to figure out what to do. That's the fun in a video That's game. That's out What to do. And when you yeah. can't go, you don't not go somewhere because there's a fence there. You can't go somewhere because there's a dude who you're going to end up having to fight later who's like pushing you away and he's oppressing you. Mm-hmm. And there's like people that are oppressed and you don't, you feel bad for them. Yeah. Not because you see their, not because you're, you're being told their story in a cinematic. It's because you're experiencing their feelings. Yeah. You are actually being felt like you can't go to certain, they're, they're oppressing. And then you have to run away. You have no weapons. And then you get a weapon. So when you're killing someone, it's not just points. Your killing is a, is a gratification that you can't have in it's any a, other mm-hmm. gameplay experience. Yeah. Because you're finally able to, you know, van- vanquish the thing that was in your way. Mm-hmm. And so it's not just jumping over the obstacle. Yeah. It's overcoming a personal hurdle that you had. Did you play any of Team Fortress 2? I played a little bit of Team Fortress 2. What I really did with Team Fortress 2 was I played the, the director's commentary or the uh, game maker's commentary. Yeah, isn't that great? This is incredible. You should do that for Half Life 2 and, the, and Episode 1 I, also. I, I didn't know they I, had that. Oh, but it's I've been fantastic. playing Team Fortress 2 for a lot. I played about eight hours yesterday. And you love. Wow. It's really love. fun. Love. Yeah. It's really fun. With the different, the, the, the graphical elements are amazing. Plus, it looks super slick. Mm-hmm. And it's just so freaking funny. And then you can also be like the different. Styles like you can be the spy who can look like any of the other players on the other team. And be like, let's go, and you can call for the the enemy's medic. Yeah, as a guy, as so a you spy, can be yeah. like. And the best thing to do is to play a spy dressed as an enemy spy. Oh, that's funny. Because then when you're shooting, they're like, they're like, oh, who are you shooting at? <laughs> you're like, you sucker punch. <laughs> Have you guys played Portal? No. Yes, I started. I started <laughs> Portal. Holy yeah. crap! Yeah, I have not played Portal. Hilarious. Brilliant! Yeah, really? so funny, Wonderful. right? So funny! Yeah. What is, I thought it was. Uh, isn't it? They like, lie to you. You can't go in there. That and then like uh, she's like, sorry, we that was a fabrication. Yeah, great. Uh, we're we're gonna talk lots more and about Orange first Box. First person. Yeah. I love. It's like Puzzle Quest first person. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's a it is a puzzle game. Yeah. It, I'm very we're gonna excited. talk lots more about about Orange Box in the weeks to come because it's through. so much to it. Best value. Best value. It's Boom. fantastic. TV time again, boys and girls. Um, we have on both sides of the ocean. On both sides of the ocean, we realized that you know we talked about all these pilots: um, Bionic Woman, Reaper, Life, Journey. Oh, we didn't talk about Life. No, did you watch? Um, by the way, I did. Interesting facts. <laughs> but, but we're not going to talk about Life on this episode. <laughs> yeah. um, so we wanted to do a little bit of a re- revisit of some of those shows now that they've premiered. Um, and also talk about some of our, our favorite shows that have come back on. But we want to start, um, when we were in the UK, Wide Awake Wesley gave us uh, Thanks, Wes. a Dude. plethora of things to of check out. British TV British shows. British TV shows. Because we like, love the Jekyll. one American yeah. one. Love the Jekyll. <laughs> yes, but I don't know what that means. The Shield. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and so British one show of ever. The, so, one of the, so we're going to kind of try to peek through a couple of different shows. Um, one of them was, of course, called Life on Mars. Which, which is, has been going on for a while. Which has been going on for yeah. a good time. It's been two seasons, I think, already. Um, and the the best way to explain it is um, after a car accident, uh, a, a detective in 2006 is mysteriously sent back to the 1970s. Mm-hmm. Actually, 1973. Yep. Um, so we all watched it. And uh, what did you think, then? Well, are we saying... Because there's an aspect to that summary, is mm-hmm. the, which is the one that I got as well. Yeah. And I watched it, I said, wow, this is not, that's not the premise. The premise is really cool, but do we not spoil what the actual thing is? Well, I don't think, uh, well, what, is, what Dan's talking about, which I personally don't think is a spoiler, okay. is that it's semi alluded to the fact that this character may be in a coma, mm-hmm. but it's only alluded. They don't, you don't know if that's actually true. Um, that might be something that he's actually making up. Well, um, we may not have watched enough episodes to know. Yeah. We do. We only saw like the pilot. you said. There's a lot of the show that we haven't seen. Yes, yeah. we've only saw the pilot. So, but based on that, based on that, I'm down. I, I wasn't at first. I was a little hesitant, 
Uh, I love how it's shot. It's very dark, and sometimes the jokes ha happen over very. They're played very straight. Yeah. Well, um, which is it? What, what, it's very British or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, but and the, and how they handle this coma ambiguity mm. is. Yeah. I, I think such a real. I I I'm I'm a very particular about my dream sequences and things hmm. and it, things always feel like that's so not how you experience a dream and this really not that i've ever been in a coma but it feels it I feels like, like a coma it feels <laughs> just like a coma it's coma-esque um i wish 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 it was an american show because i feel like when they have like wow. on the television way yeah. to be on the television anti. they have the like 70s commercial yeah, and you know that if we remembered that from growing up, it would be like, oh, dude, that's so crazy! It's from, from the that. commercial from like 1973. So, I feel like if it was like my favorite Heinz ketchup bottle commercial, I'm thinking like, oh my god, what a great reference! Like, I feel like there's so many yeah. jokes yeah. that I'll never get, yeah. right. and, and that's that sucks. I think that's half of the enjoyment. I think, enjoyment it, would, of I think it would also be a worse show. But what do I, you think? I liked it. I like. I've, I've actually watched a few more episodes than you guys. Um, yeah. And it's cool. It, it gets it actually gets better. I think also. Um, oh, awesome. I didn't like the sort of rage and and it felt like it was really trying to be gritty and people weren't really behaving in realistic ways. But the thing I like the most about it is how is the the time travel aspect of I've got information hmm. about how we do things. That's technology has progressed in thirty years and. Yeah. I love his dilemma with that, and to, it's it's fun. It's a fun conceit to articulate that because many people probably haven't seen it. There's that scene where they get evidence, and the dude's like throwing it down. He's like, "Yeah, we got it." He's like eating, and his food's falling on. Yeah. They yeah. don't know. Also, the first one you walk in, you don't realize how much paper we used to have to deal with. Yeah. I mean, you walk mm. into this first 1970s cop. Thing and everybody's desk has stacks and stacks of files because they're cases that they're working on. They yeah. need to know what's in the file about the case, and they don't have computers. Right. And so it's it's really funny because it's it's a good. I think they did a really good job of showing the sort of like this is now. Yeah, we've this come is how far in a very short time. Yeah, yeah I was kind of shocked. I was yeah. like, they didn't have fingerprint stuff. In Not off skin. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was like yeah. wow. There's, so there's a lot of really good stuff. I have to say, I really enjoyed it. I'm very excited to watch the rest of them. I thought the acting was great. Mm -hmm. um, They're doing a spinoff now too, right? Uh, I don't know about the spinoff, but they are. David E. Kelly is making it for the states. That's what oh I thought. Oh boy! Was. Yeah. Well, David E. Cool. Kelly is making it for the states. I'm so a you may get what you your wish. Well, what is David really E. Kelly? Uh, what the, practice, the practice, Boston Legal, yeah, yeah. not my cup. Of Michelle tea. Pfeiffer. Those are the things he's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's are, funny. Uh, he continues he's to had do some good things that I've enjoyed. Right, the practice, that, Michelle, Pfeiffer. Legal, <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer, Michelle um, Pfeiffer. But uh, uh, Legal Girls or whatever it's called. Legal that he Eagles did. or some shit. Yeah, yeah. some shit like that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so uh, we're gonna probably keep watching uh, this. And thank you, Wes, yeah. for for hooking us up. I, I. I did enjoy me some. So, let's talk about Heroes. It's back. It's back. It's been back a little while. It's been back a little while. I will say that um, because of Dan, we know <laughs> we're all stupider. Heroes, you know, we know <laughs> that Heroes' first episode, first episode or two, can suck, and the series can be good. Oh. So rather than talking about True. the first episode back, right? Um, uh, we wanted to see a couple. We've seen three. It's mm -hmm. been three episodes. Turned out that what you just said is exactly my experience with it. That the really? first episode back sucked donkey balls. <laughs> All right. And I was, like, regular balls I was like, oh, balls. no, this show's terrible. I know. And then I know. The, the second and third one, I was like, oh, it's pretty good again. It's all right. Yeah, it's yeah, good. yeah. I didn't. Uh, it's still, it never came it's, back? It's still in. I, I can see just now by the end of the third one yeah. that the donkey balls have been the removed. Donkey balls from <laughs> they've been... Um, the show is only as good as the plot to me. The show is only as good as the powers. Interesting. No, oh, well, yeah. You know, like right. the the stuff. Hmm. It's so everything is handled. It's ter terrible, terrible writing. The the the, the, the no, I don't know if I go that no, no far. one's saying That's anything smart or intelligent. Right, and there's so many like you. It, but I love it. I don't so, know what it is. It's, it's, it's exactly how I felt about the 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 first three episodes of the first season. Yeah. Like. It's just, you know, the scenes between people, they're not acting, behaving in an interesting way or a human way. They're yeah. acting in this, in this flat, what, TV way. Everything's so TV, it's, uh... Well, it's a TV show. Right. But uh, there's some TV shows that are like, wow, we're in the golden age. And then right. this is like... Like I The Shield, to, maybe. I have to, I have to um, forgive it because it's television. Yeah. But 
now that I'm seeing some things starting to pay off a little bit, yeah. I can see that the, basically I think the setups are never going to be as good as the payoffs in this show. Well, let me say, oh, I, well, they've proven that the to things, be the case so far. Yeah, so far, most definitely. One of the things that I've that I've come to realize about Heroes um, is that unlike a show like Lost, when it's with the show like Lost, when you don't like a certain storyline, the show sucks. The episode sucks. With Heroes, they figured out a way, because there are definitely the Guatemalan couple, or brother and sister, could give a shit. The Ali Larder character, hate her to death. <laughs> but I watch the show. I enjoy the show, because yeah. I wait for Peter Petrelli to come on, unconscious in Ireland. <laughs> that, that happened. You know what I mean? Like I wait for the things that I like about it to come on, and I forgive the show the rest of the crap, which, for some reason, you do. I did not give that to any other show. I will say that there's a new love interest for Claire, mm. who I despised oh my God. up until the point where the, he took her up in the air. Really? That but worked for you? That was it. I'm a sucker. <laughs> really? I'm a sucker. We, this is like, oh, he's flying. And that's all I needed. <laughs> like, her, her being upset, like, no one, like, that, 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 no, who, how can you possibly empathize for that character? Well, like I didn't my toe. Rude. Somebody like, saw me. It was weird. Like, in, like in other invincible, <laughs> and invincible, and other superheroes as people, yeah. they, they they make their and in, Incredibles. They make the powers like the, the invisibility. You can relate to that as feeling like no one understands. No, you I mean they're, they're exactly. I, I'm surprised you're saying that because that's exactly what they're doing with Claire. And they're trying to say. No she's way. remarkable, and she has to pretend to be, to be unremarkable. unremarkable. So kid who at home who's really smart and is pretending girls who are watching who don't want to be unattractive yeah, by being yeah, smart, yeah, saying, that's exactly what no, they're doing. But it's not... I mean, if you find anything in that profound... Like, I don't say it's the, profound, what, but... There's it, nothing... It's so uncomplex, and so... Yeah. They're saying it the way... TV shows say it, not the way people say it. Sure. Right? Like Michael Clayton could have been a terrible movie if it if it if it had that way. If we've seen that lawyer show before, we've seen that right. we've seen the firm. So they speak, they use the the cliche things that lawyers say in in other law movies. But it well, didn't. Yeah, it but, said how do these people, how would this guy behave? Well, but that might be true about the show, but that doesn't mean that the show is not enjoyable. That's the um, that's what well, that's is what so great because the like Lost. It's a great example. If, if, if Lost starts writing itself that way, it, it, the audience goes away because they go, this is a shit show. And for some reason, Heroes, it's like popcorn. It's okay yeah. that it's cheesy. It's okay I, because you're like, I want to see. Although, did you notice that the chick from Reaper, the way that they yeah, made it well, not be the actress shifter. that's not yeah. there? Uh, I'm, yeah, when, I'm totally just not going to ever show you the shape that everybody knows as the thing that I'm doing. When, when they, we came back from the, from the, to the second season and he goes back to feudal Japan and the oh. dude... It's in Japanese. Yeah. I was almost like, this is Jump the Shark. This yeah. is, I'm done. But I came back to episode two and yep. three, and I'm continuing go. to watch. Now, so before can I say we... something about that real quick, too? Because I think it's of. fascinating. I'll be quick. I know nothing about feudal Japan. I don't know anything about uh, nature. Yeah. <laughs> Why <laughs> or do nurture. I know? And I just find this fascinating about symbology, and I can, like, how do I know this inherently, that that is not Japan? Because it's the Dukes of Hazard slash A-Team set. But, like, I don't know anything about the way, what trees look like in Japan. I don't know what kind of trees are inherent to that Cherry geography blossoms. than our geography. Yeah. But that place just feels false. Well, we were also, we live in the area that that is actually being yeah, portrayed. Well, I mean, maybe if you live in New York City, you don't know what a tree looks like in Japan. I don't know. We will uh, talk about some of the other shows. We've, we've watched uh, a lot of uh, a Bionic Woman, which is sort of going up and down. How's episode two? Uh, good. Really? It's, yeah, it's getting, it's getting better, but then I think it's, it's got to go some places. It's not... Jeez. It, it takes a little while. Reaper, I think it's starting to go a little bit. Oh, I'm down with Reaper. All right. But we will talk about that stuff when we do TV again. That's a TV... So for our email question this week, uh, this comes from Tyler Perkins, who says, I love to watch video podcasts, Dignation, Totally Rad Show, Cranky Geeks, which I love all of those because I've been on them all. <laughs> uh, uh, but I troll a chicken. I feel like Tyler. He, he didn't mention it. Well, it was not mentioned. Maybe he's waiting for a new episode to come out. Yeah, right. Guys. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Damn it. Uh, feels like I can hardly get to Wednesdays to see the new Totally Rad show. Uh, are there any video podcasts that you guys are must watches? You guys are Definitely. must watches. I said that, not Tyler. He used correct grammar. Um, so, what do you guys think? You, you're Mr. You watch podcasts. Uh, yeah, I do. I watch a lot of podcasts. I watch Ignatian all I love the time. That. That's a good, um, good choice. Good choice. Yeah. I'm used to it. It's sort of 
gone downhill recently. <laughs> You're dead to <laughs> me. Ever since, yeah. ever since the Monday episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I do a lot of audio stuff. I like, I like, like I go for runs and stuff and listen yeah. to. I love the one up, one up yours. I always watch one up show. Yep. Um, I like Smodcast, the Kevin Smith podcast. Yeah, still, um, still dance. But no, well, I didn't. Well, we should. I mean, the one that we are we are all excited about talking about is Amtrekker, a buddy of ours. Yeah. Right. Why don't you go, Dan? Say say your Amtrekker. Amtrekker. First off, can I just say how fascinating it is we need to, that that Jeff runs to talk radio. I think he doesn't cool. like to have a. Rhythm. I don't like having. I know. Explain it. He doesn't it. like that's to be interesting thing. forced into a rhythm pattern. I, <laughs> yes, I don't listen to music like when I run because then the rhythm of the music is how I. This is because we out of the rhythm of the night. Disdain. Yeah. 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 That's not that weird. Come on, I'm not a, it's, not, it's not fruit weird. But. It's not fruit weird. It's not fruit weird. So I go like, ahead, Amtracker. Uh, oh yeah, oh dude, Amtracker. Uh, this dude, Brett, um, is he, traveling around the country, checking off his bucket list. Right? He's got he's got fifty. <laughs> he's got a list of fifty things to do to do. Before he dies. After 50, he's going to die. Um, no. Sorry. God, that's no. terrible. I know. That's not what's happening. That's the bucket list. Um, but uh, he's got 50 things he wants to do. He's got, like, two shirts, one of them being a Totally Rad Show shirt. Well, one of, his thi- one of the things on his list was um, to uh, attend Comic-Con, yeah. which is where we met him. Yeah. Right, yes. It's awesome. So he's got this website, and he's, got the, he's checking off his list, and you can see him do all the stuff that he thought was important for him to do while he was young. Yeah. yeah. And all he's got is a computer and a camera. And he's filming the whole thing. So, yeah, if you go to Amtracker.com, yes. there's videos of each thing. And if you can help him out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. In any way. If you yeah. know yeah. the owner of You'll the see, Chicago Cubs or list. whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, I mean, I we should him. have him come and hang out with us. Yeah. Because, I mean, but, in, is that on his list? If it's not, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's already hanging out with us. But, I mean, there's lots of, uh, we, we watch Geekscape. Yeah. Yes. Geekscape. Uh, I met a bunch of old dromies in, um. The Beast Beast Beast, 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 Beast. So yeah, John's still doing that, which is, cool, uh, with the which is Beast. awesome. We listen to Twit. Very similar to this. Twit, yeah. We, I just, there's a lot of great I, stuff. I will say that I, uh, I'm i a big fan of the uh, Lynchland. Oh, Liam's we podcast. love Lynchland. Yeah, uh, Tiki Bar TV? Tiki Bar TV. Oh. So they just asked me to. Hello. One of my favorites. Um, uh, Sam Strong, tonight. Strong Bad. Strong Bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, never oh, I love Strong, Strong Bad. Strong Bad's really, really funny. There's, there's tons. There's so, so many good ones stuff. out there. This American Life is now podcastable, which is I, which I wanted that for years. NPR fan. I say so. Love Line. Although the podcast just sort of you now have to go to the, sh- the website to dump, but I freaking yeah, eat up Love Line. And when they, dude, when the Seth MacFarlane from Family Guy yeah. is on Love Line, the funniest two hours. So that hopefully will get you through till Wednesday uh, <laughs> so, of 2010. The, 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 I wanted to, what I want to say was the great yeah. thing about the internet and what we do and what all those people do is that it's all like it, it, nobody's competing with anybody because there's not like a time slot and well, you, like, you can only watch it at 8 o'clock this show. Also about that on the Crave podcast. Right? They, Isn't it great? They, they, everybody he was shocked. The guy was shocked that I was saying I don't even really think about it as a competition. Right. But he, the, he made a point which was yeah, but you only have so many hours in the week. You only have so many hours yeah. you can allot to this type of content. And I honestly hadn't even thought about it. To me, I'm like, dude. But people who watch podcasts are t- tend to watch more. Right. Oh, yeah. You know? So Most it's like, definitely. spread the word. Tell people about stuff. It's great. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tyler, for your uh, email question. If you want to email us, you may do so by sending us an email to fans at totallyradshow.com. And we have an amazing new website. We do. That is the amazing new totallyradshow.com, uh, where you we can also amazing new email us backgrounds <laughs> like, like Nikki, our girl Serenity, did. She's awesome. Yes. Um, and at our new website, you can find out exactly the dimensions that we need yes. for that kind of stuff. So we love getting those. We've gotten way more than we ever have before love with the it. new website. It's, and it's awesome. It's some now, amazing work. Speaking of doing good work for us, we have a little bit of help to ask for. We uh, want to start advertising our show. Yes. And so we're looking for a banner ad, mm-hmm. something cool that sort of speaks to our show. And we're not really in the position to do that type of stuff, you know. Well, <laughs> yeah. with, the, with the skills with required. With mad skills, yeah. which is why we're happy that people send us backgrounds. Yes. Jeff is like, I'm done doing those. <laughs> yes. uh, but uh, yeah, oh, so God, if you have any ideas. Doing, I remember, remember how terrible they were when I was God. doing them. Oh, wow. Ooh, but yeah. if you have any ideas for a banner ad, something you could have, we could give around to people for, to put on their MySpace yeah. profiles. Uh, it's just something we can do. There's, you can also use all of our logo stuff from uh, totallyradshow.com slash downloads. We mm. should update it with some requirements 
Okay. For them as well. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and over the, My, uh, the MySpace, the website also, A, new RSS feeds of news. So you can check yes. back hourly for news in movies, TVs, comics, video games. You can make it your homepage. It's constantly It's basically changing. where we cull the news that we're going to talk about on the show anyway. So basically, it's fun to keep yeah. up with us. Yeah. At the same time. Plus, you can live chat with fans. Uh, we're going to be hopping in the live chat. What about the forums? The forums are awesome. The forums Check are the kicking forums. high. It's a really cool community. Also worth mentioning, as I, we did a little bit earlier, the recommendations. Yes. We're now going to start adding things that we talked about in the episode. We're going to add you a little link on the site yep. so you can get more information about like those. Like Orange Box. Like Orange if Box. If you plan on getting Orange Box, feel free to just go to our website and click on the Amazon thing for Orange Box. And there you go. It's that easy. It's got a bang. Also, I want to say one little quick thing a plug for myself um, nothing wrong with that some people may know that I am in a comedy improv group here in Los Angeles oh. uh, we got into the LA comedy festival oh so that's gonna be in November thanks I didn't tell you guys that no I, yeah. I don't know now but yeah. that's awesome so we're gonna be in the LA comedy <laughs> festival I believe we're performing November I want to say third and fourth but I could be wrong oh, yeah, check check returning champs.com I'll post something on our forums too uh, I mean I yeah, check, check returningchamps.com is my is my improv group, but I'll put something on our show for cool. um, But it would be great if there are anybody in the area that wants to come out. The LA Comedy Festival is really cool. We'll be on a bill with multiple groups. So even if we're terrible, there's other fun stuff we'll to see. There. A bill means again? list of people I performing. I think it's November 3rd and 4th. But yeah, I'm, we'll be there. I'm yeah, not. these guys will be there. It'll be well, awesome. I mean, maybe. I might be well, in Dan will be there. I might even be in Fresno, sweating. <laughs> but there's no Fresno Comedy Festival. I don't well, know that's, that's it for this week's edition of the Totally Rad Show. I'm Alex Albrecht. I'm Jeff Canada. Hey, what? There's so many more things. MySpace.com slash Totally Rad Show. Become a friend to get oh, updates yeah. so that was on one news thing. and stuff. Oh, and Our jinx. email. Which I already said. I already said. Okay, but you didn't say Jinx. Jinx.com slash TRS. And we are going to be releasing the Baby T very shortly. Some of these are limited. Oh! Oh my god! I'm sorry. Oh my god! Let's just sit down and do it. That's Dan. He broke up with you. Do that line again once you gather yourselves. What happened all of a sudden? He just sounded so like caring. He just looked at me and goes. He broke up with me. <laughs> and I was like, really? That's your choice? <laughs>